is Dr. Mbeba Malende, who is uh, who is a virologist and vaccination actually that is he is a vaccinologist and a senior consultant in pediatric infections and a lecturer at Egerton and Makarere University thank you very much for joining us we're also expecting Dr. Ahmed Ogwell who is the Dep deputy director at the Africa CDC thank you very much for joining us here on bottom line Africa now let's start with that story Malawi we have South Sudan they have you know uh, destroyed the COVID-19 vaccinations due to the expiry dates and now they are saying they cannot give their citizens the, those expired vaccinations and on the other hand we're saying WHO is urging African countries not to waste vaccines donated to them kindly just comment about that um, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity to comment about this particular uh, story one of the things that we need to realize is that African countries have opportunity to get vaccines from uh, three different uh, uh, avenues that are available now. So one is the COVAX, and this is a body that is brought up by a combination of between uh, GAVI and WHO and CEPI. And then there's another arrangement by the African Union where the African countries are able to purchase the vaccines at a subsidized rate. And if they do not have the funding to purchase it, they're able to be given a loan to buy these particular vaccines. And then there's another route where the African countries can get their vaccines directly. Let's say they engage the Indian. So Malawi received around 300,000 vaccines from the COVAX arrangement. And then it received around 102,000 vaccines from the African Union. And uh, 50,000 vaccines, they got it directly from the Indian government. So the total amount of dosages available were around 400 and, uh, 452,000 vaccine doses. Now, of the vaccines they got from the African Union, that particular consignment, the expiry date was the 3rd of April 2021. And the vaccines that are getting from COVAX, the expiry date is July. And so there was a bit of a confusion there. Now, Malawi, after giving out some of these vaccines, because they're targeting to give out the vaccines to those who are above 18 years of age, they, they, they've so far given out about 335,000 doses. And they found that of the consignment that came from the African Union, about 19,610 doses had expired. And those are the particular doses that they destroyed. The explanation that the government of Malawi gave, and which is, makes sense depending on what, how one wishes to look, look at it, is that the information had already leaked to the population and to the countries that there were some doses which had expired. And so this was driving back their, their campaign for vaccines administration because people were refusing to come for the vaccine because they said that they, they'd be injected with expired vaccines. And so the thinking of the government is that let's destroy this vaccine so that we can rebuild confidence in the immunization drive. Of course, earlier the WHO had told countries not to destroy the vaccine, but uh, that was last month. But then uh, two days, three days ago, the WHO said that no countries could actually go ahead and destroy particular vaccine dosages that they have after they were advised so by the Serum Institute. All right. Now you've talked about the, the fact that there's a confusion. Already, there's already a slow uptake of vaccines in Africa. Will this have a ripple effect, considering there's already hesitation? Good point to us. Remember, generally, African countries have very poor immunization rates, generally. I mean, Kenya's vaccination rate is around 68%. Uh, Uganda is around 52 percent. So generally, countries perform poorly over the immunization coverage. And now the COVID vaccine specifically has had a lot of hesitancy. You look at a country that is vaccinating, uh, if you look at uh, Kenya, you look at Uganda, look at Malaya, all of them, they are, they, are, they are hardly hitting their targets. So most countries are doing less than 60 percent vaccination rates for their targeted numbers. Malawi targets to vaccinate, uh, it has a population of around 18 million, and the target is at least to vaccinate 11 million adults who are above 18 years of age. And they've already done only 300,000. So there's poor uptake across board. So this particular story, depending on how it's packaged, will make people not come for the vaccine or not take it up. But our reason is that keeping any expired dosages and information circulating around that there's some expired vaccines is more counterproductive. So they decided to destroy them in an effort to actually build the confidence and say we no longer have expired vaccines. The ones that we have in store are okay, so you come and get the vaccines. So it may depend on how the message is packaged. It's really a packaging issue of the message as opposed to um, wasting a vaccine when we need more. 
talked about wasting a vaccine when we need more. And just the other day, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa warned of vaccine nationalism. He even termed it as vaccine apartheid. Um, as African countries looking for solutions, do you think we have the capability to come up with our own vaccines? I think that is our biggest question and our biggest problem as Africa. Yeah? Uh, the reason being that one, our African countries are poor. Two, manufacturing of vaccines is very, very expensive. And three, health has not been a very big priority for majority of African countries. Because you see that they allocate very little money. We've never attained the Abuja declaration of allocating around 15% of GDP as well. Most countries are at around 6%, 7% uh, at the very best for over all. 10 years. So our allocations to healthcare are very poor, our, our infrastructure is very poor, so that is the biggest problem. And in any case, uh, COVID numbers in Africa have been very low compared to what is going on or elsewhere in the world. So that has also drawn uh, a bit of, uh, killed a bit of the wind in the sails of African countries in terms of driving the story of a uh, uh, manufacture of vaccines. All right, I want us to rope in Dr. Ahmed Oguel, who is the Deputy, Deputy Director of the Africa CDC. Thank you very much for joining us here on Bottom Line Africa. Just from that story that played a few minutes ago before we started this, this discussion, um, Malawi on Wednesday destroyed a number of the COVID-19 doses, that is the vaccination uh, doses, that is the AstraZeneca vaccine. On, the, on one hand, we're saying we need more. On the other we are destroying due to the expiration. Kindly just comment about that. Um, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I think it's important to put uh, things into context. Um, vaccines do not expire at the time of reset. They expire in the hands of someone who is holding them and not using them for the purpose which they were designed uh, for. So if um, an institution country holds vaccines until they expire, um, I think um, it is important to uh, encourage um, uh, countries like that to use up their vaccines as quickly as when they receive them. Vaccines are not supposed to be on the shelves. Vaccines are supposed to be in people's arms. Um, and um, when you get small do number of doses, you need to ensure that they receive that they are, those who need to receive them uh, receive them quickly. Uh, those particular vaccines you are referring to were uh, designed to be given to health workers who are in the front line, and um, I am sure that country has ma many more than uh, twenty thousand health workers, and um, uh, they could have been used within uh, a very short time. Allow me um, to interject you, and uh, sorry for cutting you short, but you've talked about the fact that the vaccines expire in the hands of those that have them. But let's not forget that there has been slow uptake of those vaccines. The government can't really necessarily just force people to, you know, get vaccinated. Absolutely true. And um, there are three things that one must be able to do. Uh, to get a successful campaign running. And I call them the three Vs. One is a vaccine. Uh, second is a vaccination system. And third is the vaccinee, that's a member of the public. So as soon as you know you are going to be receiving vaccines, engagement with members of the public so they understand the role of vaccines in stopping this pandemic is critical. Um, addressing the um, issues and uh, uh, questions that may come from members of the public is an absolute must. Uh, so it is a package that has to be addressed together. Uh, it's not just an issue of having vaccines and then waiting for people to be able to come. You must get out there and let them know why uh, and what uh, place vaccines have uh, in uh, stopping uh, this pandemic. All right, since you're from the CDC, maybe you could answer this question for us. Why is Africa being left behind? Um, as Africa CDC, we've been very clear on um, the need for vaccine equity. Um, and um, there are three reasons why Africa is still behind. One is that we don't manufacture uh, COVID-19 vaccines. In fact, of all the vaccines we use on the continent, we manufacture only 1%. Um, the second reason why we are being left behind is because there are countries that have more resources 
who right at the beginning of uh, development of these vaccines, they booked um, uh, large amounts of doses. It is like buying um, a house off plan while someone is waiting for the house to be completed. If someone buys off plan, then they own the place uh, uh, even before the house has been completed. This is what happened with the vaccines. The third reason why uh, Africa is being left behind is because of vaccine nationalism and protectionism uh, tendencies of some countries blocking um, export of vaccines, even those that we have already negotiated and um, are willing to pay for. So these are the three things that are making Africa being left behind, but it is an opportunity. Uh, and as Africa CDC, we've called a meeting uh, uh, a few weeks back uh, to be able to uh, establish a roadmap of expanding our vaccine manufacturing on the continent because we do have um, uh, the capacity already. We just need to expand it um, uh, so that it can be able to address the immediate need of COVID-19 and tomorrow um, uh, can address the, the need for other types of vaccines that we uh, we definitely need on the continent. All right, let me just bring in Dr. Ombeva. Thank you for staying on the line. Now, there is no clear information as to when India is going to resume, you know, coming up with those AstraZeneca vaccines and actually distributing them. There have been calls of mixing different brands, J Johnson & Johnson with AstraZeneca. Let's, you know, remember that people already got their first dose. So then what are the implications of mixing brands? So thank you so much. I think one of the things we need to realize is that uh, um, initially no studies have been done that show, you know, what would happen if you mixed the two vaccines. We need to remember that the COVID as a disease has been with us for just slightly over a year. And the vaccines have been with us for maybe close to about seven to nine months. So we, there's a lot of information that is not known. Most of the things we are learning right in the field as you give, as you go, as you observe, as you record, as you document. What may happen is that because the demand is very high, countries are actually are uh, free to be able to, to bring in the new vaccines that they can, let's say Johnson & Johnson or something else, or Pfizer or whatever, and give to other people who are not vaccinated. In fact, the thinking at the moment is that at least the ones who got at least one dose, at the very least, have some level of protection. There's a study, an interesting study that came from uh, Israel recently that looked at, but this was uh, focusing on the Pfizer vaccine, that they found that in fact if people who had gotten COVID they got only one dose, they were able to develop a lot of uh, 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 protection, what we call correlates of protection. That was close to about seven times those who had not got the vaccine, or no, who had got the two doses of the vaccine but had not developed COVID. That appeared to suggest that, and, and when the study looked at those who got just one dose, it showed that they, they appeared to raise some, some level of protection that was, okay, not adequate, but good enough. So I think that the people who've gotten one dose, they don't need to be discouraged. The message is that, you know, let's wait and see what happens. I do know that uh, new emerging data shows that the distance between one dose to another one, that is, if it's a, a little longer than initially anticipated, or four weeks, if it's uh, eight, or even 12 weeks, the, the AstraZeneca vaccine appears to produce a better response. So that means it's not all lost. Countries are working so hard and alongside their COVAX and CDC and, and WHO to try and get us the vaccines as soon as we can. But in the event of a delay, there is still a benefit for those who got one dose. And if we get us, if we get Johnson and Johnson and the others, I think the thinking will be that we first give to the others who haven't voted, who are in the queue, and then hope that we get the, the, the right vaccines to give them, because we do not yet have data on mixing. Dr. Ahmed Ogwell, the virus is mutating. Will the initial vaccine work? Um. That's a question that uh, cannot be answered, yes or no. Um, studies have already shown that uh, some variants uh, can escape um, uh, the vaccine effects, while some variants uh, can be able to be controlled by the vaccine effects. What we must avoid is to allow more variants uh, that may end up um, uh, being uh, very good at uh, escaping uh, vaccine uh, effects to emerge. And uh, we do that by controlling um, uh, the, the uh, transmission within um, uh, our, our communities. So variants are a risk because we don't know 
how they will interact with the vaccines, and therefore we need to uh, bring um, the transmission uh, to a stop as quickly as possible to avoid uh, those variants. But viruses by nature will, will mutate. If you allow it to continue um, um, being transmitted from one person to another, they will mutate. The more it is transmitted, the more it will mutate. So it is up to um, us as, as the whole globe to appreciate that fact uh, so that we are um, uh, vaccinating everybody across the globe. Those who think that uh, by vaccinating themselves only, uh, they will be having an advantage, the advantage will be lost if a variant tomorrow emerges that will be able to escape the vaccines that they have already taken. So this this situation is one where all of us must be um, uh, immunized uh, or else uh, all of us uh, will be at risk because of those variants uh, that you have mentioned. All right, so then what next for Africa, considering we still have a, a limited number of vaccines and yet the virus is here and it's spreading? Um, there are three things we must do. The first is we must use the tools that we already have in our hands, and that is mask up social distancing, washing uh, your hands with soap or sanitizing, avoiding crowds, spreading the correct information. These tools work. Uh, the vaccines are an additional tool. And as Africa CDC, um, WHO is doing the same, we are working very hard to try and unlock uh, uh, this particular logjam where we don't have enough vaccines uh, on the continent. And as we continue to do that, looking for the vaccines, using different methods and ways, we must use the tools that we currently have to try and slow down uh, the uh, spread of the virus across the continent. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed. Dr. Umbeva, your last comments. Dr. Ahmed just said that mo the more it's transmitted, the more it will mutate. Your final comments, please. Uh, what, what I think I, sh I need to add to that is that I want to continue to encourage uh, those who have not got the vaccine and are eligible to go get their vaccine. Because these countries still have the vaccines. There's no need for a country to destroy vaccines when we can get it. So let's mobilize ourselves, the teachers, the security people, the health workers, let's go get this vaccine. This vaccine is safe and it's effective. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Dr. Umbeva Malende, he, Malande, who is a vaccinologist and a senior consultant in pediatric infections and a lecturer at Egerton and Makerere University, and Dr. Ahmed Ogwell, a deputy.